Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Scripture Radio Book Club. Today, we're taking another journey through the book Business for the Glory of God, the Bible's teaching on the moral goodness of business by Mr. Wayne Grudem. Today, we're going to move forward with reading chapter four, which is titled Commercial Transactions. Buying and selling are fundamentally good and provide many opportunities for glorifying God but also many temptations to sin. Several passages of scripture assume that buying and selling are morally right. Regarding the sale of land in ancient Israel, God's law said, if you make a sale to your neighbor or buy from your neighbor, you shall not wrong one another. Leviticus 25, 14. This implies that it is possible and in fact it is expected that people should buy and sell without wrongdoing one another. That is, that the buyer and seller can do right in the transaction. See also Genesis 41, 57, Leviticus 19, 35 and 36, Deuteronomy 25, 13 and 16, Proverbs 11, 26, Proverbs 31, 16, Jeremiah 32 and 25, and Jeremiah uh, 32, 25 and verses 42 and 44. In fact, buying and selling are necessary for anything beyond subsistence level living. And these activities are another part of what distinguishes us from the animal kingdom. No individual or family providing for all its own needs could produce more than a very low standard of living. That is, if it could buy and sell absolutely nothing and had to live off only what it could produce itself, which would be a fairly simple range of foods and clothing. But when we, but when we can sell what we make and buy from others who specialize in producing milk or bread, orange juice or blueberries, bicycles or television, cars or computers, then through the mechanism of buying and selling, we can all obtain a much higher standard of living and thereby fulfill God's purpose that we enjoy the resources of the earth with thanksgiving. 1 Timothy 4, 3 through 5, chapter 6, verse 17. While we eat and drink, and do all to the glory of God. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Therefore, we should not look at commercial transactions as a necessary evil or something just morally neutral. Rather, commercial transactions are in themselves good because through them we do good to other people. That is because of the amazing truth that in most cases, voluntary commercial transactions benefit both parties. If I sell you a copy of my book for $12, then I get something that I want more than a copy of the book, I get your $12. So I am better off than I was before when I had too many copies of that book, copies that I was never going to read, and I am happy. But you got something that you wanted more than your $12. You wanted a copy of my book, which you did not have. So you are better off than before you were so you are better off than you were before and you are happy thus by giving us the ability to buy and sell god has given us a wonderful mechanism through which we can do good for each other we should be thankful for this process every time we buy or sell something we can honestly see buying and selling as one means of loving our neighbor as ourself buying and selling are activities unique to human beings out of all the creatures god made Rabbits and squirrels, dogs and cats, elephants and giraffes know nothing of this activity. Through buying and selling, God has given us a wonderful means to bring glory to him. We can imitate God's attributes each time we buy and sell. If we practice honesty, faithfulness to our commitments, fairness and freedom of choice. Moreover, commercial transactions provide many opportunities for personal interaction as when I realize that I am buying not just from a store, but from a person to whom I should show kindness and God's grace. In fact, every business transaction is an opportunity for us to be fair and truthful and thus to obey Jesus's teaching. So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Matthew 7, 12. Because of the impersonal, interpersonal nature of commercial transactions, business activity has significant stabilizing influence on a society. An individual farmer may not really like the auto mechanic in town very much, and the auto mechanic may not like the farmer very much, but the farmer does want his car to be fixed right the next time it breaks down, and the auto mechanic does love the sweet corn and tomatoes that the farmer sells. So it is to their mutual advantage to get along with each other. 
and their animosity is restrained. In fact, that may even seek the good of the other person for this reason. So it is with commercial, so it is with commercial transactions throughout the world and even between nations. This is an evidence of God's common grace because in the me mechanism of buying and selling, God has provided the human race with a wonderful encouragement to love our neighbor by pursuing actions that advance not only our own welfare, but also the welfare of others, even as we pursue our own. In buying and selling, we also manifest interdependence and thus reflect the interdependence and interpersonal love among the members of the Trinity. Therefore, for those who have eyes to see it, commercial transactions provide another means of manifesting the glory of God in our lives. However, commercial transactions provide many temptations to sin. Rather than seeking the good of our neighbors as well as ourselves, our hearts can be filled with greed so that we seek only our own good and give no thought for the good of others. This would happen, for example, when one person in a business transaction wants 99% or 100% of the benefit and wants the other person to be reduced to a 1% or 1% of the benefit. To be reduced to 1% or 0% of the benefit. My apologies. Or our hearts can be overcome with selfishness and inordinate desire for wealth and setting our hearts only on material gain, Paul says. Those who desire to be rich fall into temptation into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evils. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs. 1 Timothy 6, 9-10 Because of sin, we can also engage in dishonesty and in selling shoddy materials whose defects are covered with glossy paint. Where there is excessive concentration of power or a huge imbalance in knowledge, there will often be oppression of those who lack power or knowledge, as in government-sponsored monopolies where consumers are only allowed access to poor quality, high-priced goods from one manufacturer for each product. Sadly, even some who call themselves Christians are dishonest in their business dealings. I have heard several stories from Christian friends about how other so-called Christians have broken their word, forgotten their business promises or failed to keep them, betrayed a partner's trust, done shoddy work, or even or been dishonest about a product or the condition of a company. These actions by a small minority in the Christian community bring reproach on the whole church and bring dishonor to the name of Jesus Christ. Such, such actions should not be swept under the rug, but should be subject to the process of personal confrontation and church discipline that Jesus outlines in Matthew 18, 15 through 20. But the distortions of something good must not cause us to think that the thing itself is evil. Commercial transactions in themselves are fundamentally right and pleasing to God. They are a wonderful gift from him through which he has enabled us to have many opportunities to glorify him. And let's take a few moments right here to discuss what we're learning from this chapter in the comments section. We're talking about commercial transactions. Well, that's all the time we have today for the book club here at Scripture Radio. I hope this book, Business for the Glory of God, has blessed you today and many blessings on your business. We'll see you right here next time on Scripture Radio. Take care.